the fastest render settings in Redshift. I just want to give you guys my template. It'll be available on Patreon uh, with all the render settings and things set up that are good to go. It'll come with this project file with a nice Infinite Floor Studio. Um, you can leave the cube. I'll make it like Blender, so you have to delete the cube every time you start. No, you can just delete it. But yeah, once you get it set up, all you have to do is go to Window Customization, and then you go to Save as Startup Layout, and then you do that again, and you go to Customization, and you go to Save as Default Scene. And then every time you open up your project file, you'll hit New and say, okay, that's fine. And every time you'll pop up with this. And not only is it just the lighting and stuff set up, but all of the render settings are set up as well. So let's talk about render settings. So the way I have this set up is not for the fastest like render production quality render. This is for look dev and working. So I want the snappiest UI. I want it to be as quick and responsive as possible, even with glass, with chromatic aberration and caustics on. It's very quick and ready to go. So that's that that was the focus of this setup. So once you have a setup, you can just come down here and like type it in as like Effectatron's uh, S god tier plus plus amazing you know i can't type there just like that and um then you have that set up for forever and you can save that when you default save and again if you have like anything that you use normally or that you use a lot just simply put it in organize it and then once you get it all set up you can just you know use my render settings good again go to save save it as the startup layout you can save the layout again as well and then you can also save as a default scene and that way you know you have all of your stuff in there plus my render settings so let's go into the render settings because there are a few tweaks that you might need to make based on your graphics card okay so we'll talk about those really quick so basically this is all set up so that we have the fastest progressive uh ipr set up with the denoising on as well so but default denoising i have a set to optics which means you have to have an rtx card if you don't have an rtx card use oiden oiden's going to be the fastest it's the cpu basically version of optics it's going to be good so the way we have optics set up is that we have a setup to not denoise it until it's done going all through all 64 of our progressive passes which means that it's not going to try to denoise it while it's trying to render it which I've done a lot of tests, makes it faster, which is good. So it doesn't denoise it until it gets done. So you have a snappier viewport because it's not trying to denoise it while it's going. And then you get the final product actually out faster as well because it separates those two steps. All right, and we'll show how to do that here in a second. But yeah, then we also have hardware ray tracing on. Again, you have to have an RTX card for this. Um, there you go. Uh, so that's going to be important and it needs to be at least a 30 series and up i think to really take advantage of that i'm not sure the 20 series works with that it might i don't know let me know but at that point it's time it's time to upgrade it is uh the the difference is insane uh, if you're on a mac obviously you won't have access to this or optics you'll be stuck with oiden or alta single is what i would suggest using for the final product because alta single gives you the most detail and stuff for shots like that where Oiden is more your fast thing. Okay, but then what I'm talking about with the advanced settings is we have it also set up so that um, everything is good to go for animation, not just still images, which means we have random noise pattern off because by default that is on. We also have automatic sampling off right now, which is it's just kind of limited to really low samples, just again, to give you the fastest, fastest, fastest. So it doesn't have to do any calculations. It's just like, boom, this is it. You can turn on automatic sampling. It probably, you're not going to see that big of a difference when it's these small of renders and stuff. So definitely you can turn on automatic sampling if you want and then just save that. So again, if you don't know what automatic sampling is, basically rather than messing around with your samples min and your samples max, it does it for you. So you don't have to. So all that matters when you go to render time is whatever this threshold is. And this bucket quality threshold is your noise threshold. The higher the number, the more noise your scene is going to have, meaning the more grain and stuff like that. And the more grain as if it is, the more errors that can be caused by denoising because it's going to try to smooth things out that maybe don't need to be smoothed out. So lower the bucket quality, and that is... So lower the bucket quality threshold or the noise threshold, it's going to give you higher settings. So you can get an idea of kind of what these settings are. Low, medium, 0.01, high and very high, right? So if you want these looks, you just click that and then set it to automatic and then you don't have to worry about sample settings. It's not always gonna be 
the absolute fastest, but it is going to give you the results you want. And that is you know, why you use it, um, because you don't have to sit here and trial and error. Do I want 512 Mac, 64 min, you know, and do all this stuff. You just on my sampling, boom, go. So you can turn that on by default. Actually, let's go ahead and turn it on. It's totally fine. We'll leave it on. I convinced myself. All right, and then definitely random noise patterns off because uh, I want to explain that because a lot of people don't really understand that. Um, by default, that gives you a random noise pattern from frame to frame to frame, which is great for an organic filmic look. But when you're using something like Denoiser, when you're going from one frame to the next and all of a sudden these two things are like here, these two noises that I was just blending on that frame are now not there. Uh, you get these weird warply patches and stuff. If you've ever seen these weird little like shadowy round patches that kind of look like um, bad GI in an Unreal Engine game kind of thing, um, that is because you're sampling your noises are moving around and you're trying to blur things that are moving from frame to frame and it's just not going to look good so you turn off random noise pattern so you have a random noise pattern that's going to stay the same from frame to frame to frame so when you denoise it it's going to be able to determine between your actual render and what's the noise so that's good okay then you have the uh, denoising settings this is where it's important to have your optics set to zero and zero for both which basically means i'm not going to denoise it until it is done rendering so uh this is gonna again for the snappiest viewport and the fastest render times but again you might have to sit around and wait for it to finish up before it denoises but it's not too bad boom now you get that denoiser where if we had this um on you know while we we're going around we're getting a little bit more lag it's not too bad but it's definitely a little more laggy and it tries to denoise it while it goes and you do get there faster but why what's the point of that really i don't you know, so I like to have it set to zero. There we go. So then we kind of get the passes so you can kind of see what it's going to look like a little more. And then you also get to see kind of what the real effect of the denoiser is. Just like that. Cool. I like that. All right. Then lastly, um, motion blur. You can turn that on if you want. Blah, blah, blah. Um, the rest of it is pretty good. I use brute force and brute force because I think it's the fastest. And then I have caustics enabled. If you want to turn those off, go ahead. But they're enabled with brute force, and they're actually really fast. That's why we're getting this cool little red bit there. Turn that off. We kind of lose some of the – we just have kind of a red blur there versus we kind of had some of the sharpness from the glass actually coming through there. Totally fine. And then the most important things are going to be come, coming from right here in the advanced system settings. These are going to be the things that you need to change on your GPU. Uh, and this is going to really give you the fastest, best result. So I, my machine has 32 gigs of VRAM. Little little spoiler for the reveal of my new build, um, because my 3090 died. Okay. So basically, bucket size. If you have over basically 16 gigs of VRAM, 512. Boom. If you're not using 512 and you have that much VRAM, you are literally just wasting time you're, you're rendering with a hand tied behind your back um 512 basically the bucket size is just going to affect literal size of the buckets you can see these boom 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 but 512 is going to go faster right because we have a bunch of vram now if we go down to 64 and do it to get this little bit now if your machine only has eight gigs of vram 64 is probably almost always going to be too low. I mean, honestly, unless you're like in a 20 series card or something. But see, that took 12 seconds, 0.89, whereas at 512, boom, 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 boom. We'll see how long that takes. Remember, it was 12.98 for that, and it was 7.56. So that's a pretty big jump just by changing the bucket size. Now, 256 is probably the sweet spot if you have like a RTX card that ends in like a 80 you know, like a 3080 or 4080, something 256 is probably going to be the best because that's like the 512. Now, that was actually 7.07. So that's like actually even faster than the 512. And then again, it is kind of based on the renders. And sometimes when you do do these things like back to back to back, that you do get different results. Boom, nine seconds for for 128. So maybe 256 is the sweet spot for certain scenes. So definitely do these tests and check those out yourself 7.6 for that time and then we'll go back to the 256 see if it beats 7.6 looks like it's going to and boom 7.1 back to 
I love this stuff. 7.6. Yeah, so 256. You know what? I'm going to leave it on that by default. Uh, that way, if you don't have like the a 90 series card, you should be fine. If you do have a Mac, like a metal, um, 256 should be good for you as well, actually. So we'll leave it at 256. Um, do that. But then if it's you see it's kind of throttling it or whatever, go down to 128 if you need to. Now, why I have it set to horizontal instead of spiral or Hilbert is because I find that horizontal is slightly faster. So that was 7.18 at horizontal. Switch it to spiral. These are tests that I do and maybe you haven't done um, because spiral is set up by the default settings. And that was 7.3. That's 0.3 seconds almost of for just changing the way it order the order of it. Like, why does that make sense? It doesn't to me. But there's 7.5 when you set it to Hilbert. But at horizontal, we shave off almost half a second. And that was some 7.5 to 6.8. So we did. We shaved off over half a second just switching it to horizontal. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense, but there you go. That's what I found out. So again, these aren't the default settings. They should be, uh, I think. So that's why I'm setting this up. And then as far as the rest of it goes, you want to make sure in the legacy settings that automatic displacement is off. That's off by default in this because it just jacks stuff up. And then memory wise, we're good. You can lower, if you start seeing a little lag or whatever, um, you can start, you know, bottlenecking this down. I'd go down to like 70% or something like that, especially if you're doing something with Sims and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of the quick and dirty, you know, that's how you set it up for your machine, basically. And I go more in depth in it in the Mind Emotion Workshop um, and the intro class as well. But overall, that's the big thing. And then this stuff, that's you do you. I don't know what kind of files you want to export out and stuff like that, but there you go. So that is going to be how you set that up. So once you get it kind of set up how you want it, obviously you just, again, you can save it to whatever, as whatever you want. Go to window, customization, save as default scene, window, customization, save as startup layout. There you go. Cool. Cool. This will be, again, available for download on Patreon, as well as all my other stuff and a bunch more stuff coming too. Enjoy. Enjoy.